Right, ladies and gentlemen, Laura Benanti. Spectacular joke, I bombed it. Oh, the show you? itself was the joke. I feel like you have one weekend off every are year. Are we not addressing this? Oh. Are we just letting this slide? Oh, what happened to your face? Oh, uh, yeah. No, no, okay. guys, it's not a thing. She's fine. Everything's fine. I'm fine. There she is! <laughs> Hi, guys! How are you? I'm gonna take the cape off, too. Yeah. Alright, all right. Hi! Here we are. I'm gonna take a picture of everybody. Oh my god, let's take a selfie with everybody. Look, you're hottest for Laura Bonanza. Everybody, please. can we get in here? Wait, oh, me? Yeah. How do I do it? Just, how do you do it? It's a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ready? Yeah. We're gonna try to get everybody in. Hi, guys! Oh, Alright, great. This is insane! I can't believe this is happening. Really? Well, you know, every time I see you, every yeah. time I talk to you, I'm yeah. like, act normal for five minutes. Why are we so far away? Should we go? Up? Yeah. We'll talk like normal for five seconds yeah. and my gay brain goes off and I'm right. like, it's already <laughs> And you're like, can you please just not today? My ears hurt. No, I never say that. I know, that's true. Okay. But I was gonna say, I feel like you have one weekend off a year and then it happens to be this weekend and all your friends are like, can you come do my thing at Broadway Con? No, I've never been able to come to Broadway Con, so I'm so excited. What is it about? Okay, so you're like, a, you're like a recognizable famous person in real life, but at Broadway Con, you're like <laughs> Lady Gaga level famous? What is it like to like walk around and have to like have 15 people around you? But I don't. Actually, I was like disturbed by how few people seem like they cared. <laughs> find out what you've been up to for the last year. Well, number one, the world's gone to hell. It's, it's really scary out there. But it's great for you. Yes, <laughs> so. Yes, so. so if anybody doesn't know, Laura Benanti plays Melania Trump on the TV. Sorry. How did that happen? How did it happen? I was on Steven's show to promote She Loves Me, and they <laughs> gave, thank you. Well, you've, heard of you've heard of it? I wrote it. Yeah. resemblance to her, which I don't really see, but um, he, he put up a photo of us side by side, and then I sort of did her like vacant out, and um, <laughs> and then I thought nothing of it. It was just like a tiny, you know, it was like a bit. And then after the Republican National Convention, when she like famously plagiarized Michelle Obama's speech, they called oh me. My God. I know, right? It's they, like, what? I actually feel bad for her, because obviously she didn't write it. Of Some course. idiot was like, just say this. And she was like, okay. And then like, <laughs> who was like, my whole camp, my whole like platform was going to be to I end know. online bullying. Also, can we talk about the irony of her ending bullying? I just cannot. <laughs> it's so it. funny to me. I'm like, here's your platform. Go into his bedroom, because you know they don't share a bed. Go into his bedroom and take his phone away. Right. End of platform. <laughs> genuinely love who are Trump supporters and, and not to like bring it down and, and get all serious but I do think the proliferation of like you know Fox News and Breitbart and these news sites that if that's the only thing you watch or read are actually very compelling like if I thought that right. Hillary Clinton ran a child pornography ring out of a pizza place <laughs> I wouldn't vote for her either so and the fact that we have a pathological liar as our president oh is truly astonishing. And as a mom, it really freaks me out because all of the things we tell our kids not to do, he does. And so you, you can say like, well, don't lie, don't bully, don't be mean, don't do all these things. And your kids can literally look at you and be like, but the president does it. And that's what is so terrifying to me, beyond nuclear warfare. 
The end. There's that too. Like, are you ready for so like that? Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already anticipating that, like, at Laura Benanti, stick to acting. I know. Does and I'll happen? be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of acting, Meteor Shower. Yeah. So, uh, on a scale from zero to Mandy Patinkin, how crazy is Steve Martin? He's, he is, like... Sorry, Mandy, if you're here, I love no, you. No, 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 he's the best. Um, oh, I have a funny first story about him. So he, That's like how it always goes. So he and Patty LaPone are really good friends, and I met him over and over again, and every time I met him, he'd be like, nice to meet you. And the tenth time he said that, Patty LaPone goes, if you say nice to meet you one more time, I'm gonna say your balls on fire. <laughs> She's like, you met her that time. And, and every time you dutifully pretend that you're meeting her. And the time I was like, it is an honor to meet you, sir. You killed my father, prepare to die. Prepare to die. Uh, so, uh, on a scale of zero to many be taken, he's like, he's like Tom Hanks. Like he's, oh yeah, God. he's like super Whoa. normal. That is an endorsement if I've ever heard. Yeah, no, him. he's very, very um, engaging. He's a true Renaissance man. He's a musician. He's an artist. He's a writer. He's a comedian. He's a serious actor. He's you know, an author. He's a playwright. He's so many things. He's incredibly bright. Um, really generous. He can't hear very well. Oh no. Yeah, he has. Um, I'm not sure what it's from. But so the first few times I was so nervous to be around him that all of my jokes were like under my breath. And I was like, oh, I'm being so, and he didn't respond. And I was like, oh my God, he hates me. And then, and then finally Amy was like, he can't hear you. Uh -huh. Like if you want to make a joke, you have to say it loud. Oh my God. Oh. You know, he wrote Bright Star. Yeah, I, I'm not an idiot. I know. I know. <laughs> Laura, I don't know you know, know the sky musical. is blue and there's clouds in it. I know. <laughs> Bright Star, I love Bright Star yeah, so too. much, and I would like, I love yeah. Steve Martin. Like, yeah. He's such a prolific playwright and yeah. now musical book writer. Amazing. I take it all back, Steve. Yeah, um, uh, what was it? Against? Oh, Amy Schumer. Oh, the best. Yeah. She's the best. She, you know, I know, for whatever reason, a lot of people were tweeting, like, oh, you're ruining Broadway, Amy Schumer. I'm like, why don't people, why do why people not like her? Amy Schumer. She's, she's so generous. She's so funny. She's really, really smart. She was incredible to me. And that doesn't always happen. A lot of times, like, women and comedians, they can be a little rough to each other. And from the minute I met her, she was just cool. I really like her so oh. much. And she's incredibly fast. She makes me look like a moron. No way! Oh, yeah, no, she is so, so fast. I couldn't catch up. So she microwaves a joke. It's <laughs> incredible. I feel bad for you guys. I'm here. I'm going to turn to you. Oh, you're watching on a thing. Hi, Wait. guys. Look at these people. Is, is my back to you? Wait, what happens? Oh, maybe that's where we're supposed to be back. <laughs> oh, is that where we're supposed to be back? Do you guys see us? Yeah. No, no. Okay. Oh. Okay, we're good. Does, do you guys care? No. Okay. Who's like the one person's gonna be like, yeah, move back, Bonanza. Okay. Um, I did nothing. <laughs> can we talk about one more person in that cast who I'm obsessed with? Sure. Jeremy Shamos. He's the best. Do you guys know Jeremy Shamos? It's Shamos. <laughs> is it Shamos? Shamos like famous. Oh, and is he? Yeah. Not, not really, but he's like... He's so good. He's like a hundred time Tony nominee. Like, I remember him from yeah. Clyborn Park, which yeah. is like my, probably my favorite play of all time. Sure. And like, well, how is he? Like, you know, I was thinking that he's you great. two are these like Broadway stars, professionals, you've been doing this forever, yeah. and then you're working with these two, like, you know, big TV movie yeah. personalities that yeah. have never done the HO Week thing. Do you they have, though. Have they? Tegan did Hamlet, and, and um, Amy actually comes from theater. She studied theater in college, and she actually started a theater company um, in New York. So she, she comes did? from the theater. Yeah, she wow. comes from the theater. She, she loves theater. I mean, she, like, one day I was like, what are you watching? And she was like, you is Marie and the Sound of Music. <laughs> <laughs> She runs, 
she catches a ball. Like, she's crazy. <laughs> she's a lunatic. Today we took her to um, brunch and there was jazz playing. Oh and she God. just started going. <laughs> <laughs> All the jazz musicians were like in love with her. They How gave her their she, CD. When did she start walking? She started walking at 10 months. She started crawling at six months and walking at 10 months. Daisy did not walk until she was 16 months. I thought you were going to say 16. Until so she was 16. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Ella is, she's, my friends joke that she's, She's a single mom, she's 37, she's a CEO at a company. Like, my, today my, I was complaining, I was like, Ella won't nap, and she's like, she didn't make partner by napping. <laughs> she's, she's the most serious baby, she's so funny. Is she serious? She's serious in, about life, where I feel like she's just been here a million times. So uh -huh. She's like, yeah, let's get to the point where I run everything. <laughs> yeah. Her dad has like a like a real job, right? Yeah, her dad's like he's because a civilian. Because it's implied that Lord doesn't have a real job. No, 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 I mean he, he's a civilian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's great. It's really good. He's such an appreciator of the arts, but there's not any sense of like, you know, like yeah. weird. I wrote, so I wrote these notes and I looked them back over later and I had literally written the question, what is it like being married to a straight guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I went out of my body and wrote that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, I'm like, oh, maybe the straight civilian. Okay, it's great. I yeah. mean, he is, I mean, you know, occasionally you're is like- Is he neat? Yeah. Are you neat? Yeah. So that's Yeah, cool. no, we have a, we have like a fastidious home. But our child, Don't come to our house. No, I mean, once we had our kid, I was like, oh, well, it's just going to look like a garbage pile every day now. Um, but no, it's it's great. He, you know, men and women are so different. Yes. And I guess most of the men that I know are gay. Yes. So I, I there are some times where I'm like, why don't you just understand my feelings? Like, I don't know. Um, I married a gay, and it's not a No, I kind of wish I could marry a gay.
And um, I was like that, where I was just like, I don't want to live in this small town where nobody cares about what I care about, because what I care about is, is Broadway, you yeah. know? And I wanted to be on Broadway so badly, so um, I hadn't yet learned to have a sense of humor about myself. How that did came you later. learn How did I, well, my mom has a sense of humor about herself. She oh, your mother, like, oh my God, she's, she's, she's the funniest person. She genuinely is. Yeah. is hysterically funny, and she sees the world that way. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we would be in a very serious situation, and I, as a child, would have to tell my mom to stop giggling. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, you need to pull it together. Yeah. She just finds the funny. Like, she'll just find the funny, and you know, life is life, and we all go through difficult and trying times. And, and I had some particularly trying times with my neck, and then just stuff, and my mom was like, you gotta look at what's funny about it. And Linda, yeah, oh my God. So she, she really brought out in me the part of me that looks for what's funny. The, the, the part of you that floats out of your own body, you know, uh -huh. that you can see yourself from the outside. The part of you that wrote, how, what's it like to be married to a straight guy? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but it's so, you know, if you're so deeply entrenched in your own, in what's going on with you and, and you alone, it's really hard to, um, to think anything is delightful or funny. So she sort of taught me to dissociate. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you have a memory of being like, oh, I take things less seriously now? Yeah, um, I, every day I feel that way. Every day I'm like, oh wow, I take things less seriously than I used to. Uh -huh. um, and especially as a mom, you have to do that because if I allowed every tantrum to like end me, I would be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna come back to your kid, but I have to get to this. I, mean, I just have to talk about do it. it. So, Every single human being who is nominated for a Tony Award deserves to win. Yeah. You should have two Tony Awards. <laughs> like, everyone deserves to win. And nobody was better or less good or worse or whatever, but women on the verge of a nervous oh. breakdown. I talked about it. I, can we talk about it? Yeah, sorry about it. Um, oh, I'm just going to ask you the same questions I always ask you. Great. Can you talk about getting drunk with Patty LaFone? Yes. Woo! But that was in um, Gypsy. Do you guys oh, know? Right. Does everybody know the story already? Are we bored by it? No. Okay. Okay, so um, the first time I ever met Patty was the first day of rehearsal of Gypsy at City Center, and I was playing Gypsy Rose Lee, so I was on a crazy diet where I only ate like five almonds, and um, <laughs> it was not good. But so I had eaten all day, and she was like, "Do you want to go get a drink?" And I was like, "Yes, Patty, I do want to get a drink." <laughs> and she started out by saying to the bartender, "She was like, I'll have two double vodkas on the rocks." And I was like. I will also have two double rocks <laughs> and a loaf of bread. <laughs> um, and I only remember the first like 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I'm not a big drinker and I hadn't eaten and, and I don't remember how I got home. Not safe, nobody do that. Especially young people, don't do that. Um, I just remember I woke up in the shower with my clothes and my shoes on. Um, Water awesome. Water on. Yeah. Water yeah, on. Yeah, I was in the shower with my <laughs> Yeah, and my then husband opened the shower door and was like, what happened to you? And I looked up at him and I said, <laughs> Oh my god, I you know, Gypsy was such a was such a turning point. I don't want to say it was, it was, it was a turning point. point. Yeah, well because I had so in into the woods I broke my neck. And it was like before internet stuff. Do you guys not know that, that Laura broke her neck in Into the Woods? Yeah, so I broke my neck in Into the Woods doing Pratt Fall, and it, long story short, like it became a whole thing where like the producers were saying that I didn't break my neck, and my doctor was like, mm, yes, she did. And, uh, <laughs> but it was like, I, we couldn't talk about it publicly, and it, it was just a weird thing. Like they, the post asked them why I was out, and they were like, we don't know, but we wish you'd show up for work. Meanwhile, I'm like, call her. Like, <laughs> like my mom Emma. kept like bathing me. Um, so <clears throat> that was really hard for me. It was the first time in my life I ever felt like, oh, not everybody has your best interests at heart. Because I grew up in this tiny town where everybody was like rooting for me. Um, and so after that happened, I kind of lost my love for my first love, which is theater. It, it, was, it was just so physically painful and emotionally scarring. So I took a step back and I, and I didn't do another show for a while. I did, a, some, I did like a bunch of TV stuff. And then the next thing I, I did was The Wedding Singer. Um, so, thanks. And you know, I didn't for, feel particularly proud of my performance in The Wedding Singer. I didn't feel like I was like necessarily right for that part, even though I maybe tried my best. You're, you know, not every role is your role. Yeah. They were so generous to cast me in it, and I did audition, and you know, it just ended up being like not the right fit. So I was feeling bad about that. And, um, 
So when Gypsy came along, and I auditioned for that as well, once that came along, I, and, and I felt a sense of community again, like I felt, I was able to talk about what happened to me with my neck, and uh, people who had been pretty cruel to me reached out from, from the company to be like, oh my god, I, I, I'm so sorry. And yeah. So it, it, felt like a, it felt like a healing of sorts, where I was brought back to the thing that I love to do, which is theater, you know, and it, and it made me feel like, just that I was part of a community again that I didn't really feel part of for like four or five years. Can we talk about TV? Yeah. <laughs> just so you're like, now I'm a part of the theater. I'm like, but wait, I have TV questions. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Well, okay. So one of my favorite people in the world, one of my favorite podcasters, a woman named Rebecca Lavoy, her and her husband, Kevin Flynn, run a podcast. It's the, the Law & Order SVU yeah. podcast. Yeah. So I was like, I have to, first of all, when they knew that I knew you, they were like, oh, the she's on SVU. And I was like, no, 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 no. I had to like literally write them a 15 page email about how you are our queen. And I was like, we lend her out to television, but like you do, you need to know, you have to have the respect. And so they, Rebecca thinks you're the most beautiful woman in the world. Oh, that's and she was, so I was like, I don't know anything about SVU. What, what do you want me to ask her? And she's like, literally the question is, are you still pissed about how Amaro treated you before the divorce? The answer is yes. Yeah. Well, here's what I, I don't feel like the writers really did his character a service by making him so unlikable. Uh -huh. You know, like, I just feel like, right? I mean, he's such a lovely actor and, and it was so such hard shoes to fill. Christopher Maloney was such a beloved character for so long. And then all of a sudden they bring him on and they bring me on and I'm like a soldier and a mom and I come back and it's like, and then he's kind of horrible to me. <laughs> I just felt, I felt bad for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it, to me it's like, oh right, I did that show. You know what I mean? Like, I, I sometimes forget. What is it, like, so, you know, it's like the, the thing with like, Actors on their way up, like the big thing is trying to get their like law and order, yeah. you know. You Were you ordered for like 12 episodes? Yeah, but I mean, they uh, they called me and asked Warren, Warren Light, who, you know, comes from the theater, he did um, a side man. Uh, he was the showrunner there for a while. He called and asked if I would play this character, and he was like, I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. I don't remember how many episodes it ended up being. I yeah. think it was... I have no idea. Did you have fun? I did, I did have fun. It was it was great. It was hilarious to play a soldier. Yeah. You know, in like a white tank top. Yeah. Where I was like, if I'm a soldier, we're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. I was they had me be on their podcast to talk about I remember. it. So, so I bet well, I'm gonna do one of lawyers episodes and I didn't know anything about the show and I just remember the opening shot was like the door opens and you're standing there in your like you like your army like uniform teeth. and the daughter comes running to you and I started bawling. Yes, yes. And I was like I know her! That's her daughter! Like, I just was a total also, mess. that little girl, I don't know who her parents are supposed to be, because she didn't look anything like her. <laughs> it was so funny. She was so sweet, though. Her so you're doing a show on TNT? TBS. TBS. Yeah. I'm sorry, my card got wet. No, in the, no, in no. The no. When I was <laughs> in the catastrophe of 2018. Um, yeah, it's called The Detour. And it looks like the it's funniest really, thing ever. really funny. It's Samantha Bee and Jason Jones are the producers of it. And Jason is the, one of the stars. And it's Natalie Zia. And um, it's really funny. It's like genuinely funny. I actually watched the first episode last night with my husband. We were laughing so hard. Yeah, and you play like a, you're like the FBI person. Well, I play the postal inspection service worker. And so now there's a Hamilton spoof. I don't know if you guys, I, no one watches the show, but there was, a, there was a spoof on Hamilton about the postal inspection service that was in season two, and it's really, really funny. Um, and yeah, so I, I play like a postal inspection um, like worker who becomes obsessed with his family. And in season three, I follow them to Alaska because they're on the run. And uh, it's, it's really, really funny. It's Is really it here? Funny show. No, it, uh, so it, when I did season two, when I was pregnant with Ella, it was here. Sorry, I have fuzzies in my eyes. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then it shot in Calgary. Um, it's set in Alaska, but it shot in Calgary over the summer. So how will you make that work as like a working mom? Well, I did. We went to Calgary and we oh, shot it. Oh, it's done? It's done. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's airing now, but we shot it over the summer. And are you going to keep working or are you like in mom mode? No, I mean, I, I actually think, and this might be a controversial thing to say, but I think I'm a better mom when I'm working. Yeah. Oh, Weirdly, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where I feel like when I was, thanks. Um, I feel like, 
you know, she's the number one priority for me now. She's the love of my life. Oh my God, I'm gonna cry. I know, I know. I, know. I love her so much. Yeah. And, you know, it is definitely challenging to feel like I'm being the kind of mother I want to be and also the kind of professional that I want to be. And, and I, a lot of times, don't feel like I'm doing anything well, <laughs> you know? Um, it's funny, but, you said you felt tired when I, when I saw you earlier. So tired. You look like a million bucks, oh and you are God. like... I don't know what you're talking about, but thank you. <laughs> but it's just, you know, I know the, the parenting thing, and so I know how exhausting it is, yeah. but you look like you had just have it all together. I, I, that is a, a, an illusion. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't. Like, I, you know, I was coming here today, so I like did my hair and my makeup, but my husband literally <laughs> said to me the other day, Sometimes I feel like you don't care what you look like. Patrick! <laughs> <laughs> I know. And I was like, I don't. Oh, so that's what it's like being very district. Yeah, yeah, that is what it's like being very district guy. Where he was like, no, I feel like the only time you dress up is like for work. And sometimes it a little bit hurts my feelings because I want you to like dress up for me. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. But so, but like when I'm home, I look like a crazy person. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of times where I don't feel like I'm doing anything well. But when I was just home with Ella, and, and it, it was just she and I all day, I was not as good of a mom. I don't think um, I was as patient. I don't think I was as creative with her. It was also earlier days, and I had, like, really bad um, depression after yeah. she was born, because she didn't sleep at all. She had really bad stomach problems. Yeah. So that was very trying and difficult for me. I want to ask you all the boring parent questions. We'll do that later. No, no, I mean, I feel like... I feel like it's an important thing to talk about because I feel like female sort of reproductive issues are sort of taboo in general, that it's this thing that we're all supposed to just like shut up and be quiet about it and just like silently bleed. Uh. And um, I, 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 it's for me, that's part and parcel of a deep-seated misogyny, which led yeah. us to have a president yeah. who is a garbage monster. Yeah. Um, so you know, for me, I feel like it's important to talk about like postpartum depression and anxiety and about how, how, you know, there's all this talk about how to care for a baby, but there's no talk about how to care for a mother. Yeah. And, um, and in our culture, in so many other cultures, everybody rallies around the mother and the baby for a long time. And so the baby and the mother learn each other. And in our culture, you're just supposed to know what you're doing and then have a blowout and Instagram yourselves and matching outfits. And I'm like, fuck that. No. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. I apologize. I don't say swears. So it makes you sound not smart. Um, but it, you know, it, it upsets me. It frustrates me. So, so it took me a while to be comfortable with the fact that I am a better mom when I'm working. Yeah. And I'm a better actress now that I'm a mom. Uh -huh. Because I think I have a deeper empathy and a deeper appreciation for the craft. Like in the past, if I had been in a play, I would have woke up, I would have woke up, thought about the play, meditated, worked out, like had all this time to just obsess about myself. And now I wake up at six in the morning if I'm lucky. I, you know, I feed her, we go to the coffee shop, like we have all of our things. I don't think about myself until I get to the theater at 7.15. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, oh, I can rest. <laughs> like being on stage performing yeah, yeah. is restful. Will you miss the structure of that? <laughs> I miss it so much. Yeah. I miss it so much. I miss the play, I miss my people, I miss Amy. Oh, so much. She became such like, she became such an important part of my life. And um, that's the hard thing about theater and acting is like, it's almost like war and that it bonds you. So I mean, that's, a, that's a horrible thing to say. <laughs> war is horrible and those people are heroes and we are playing dress up. But it is, it is a thing that bonds you quickly because you have a common um, goal. Um, so when you're suddenly ripped from your family, it's really hard. Yeah. So I, I like went through the post-show blues. Yeah. We only have a, this clock is like ticking down the wow. thing I've been looking forward to for like nine months and I want to take it over. We still have a lot of time. Yeah, we do. Well, what do you have coming up? What's happening? I'm doing uh, concerts with my mom at 54 Below. Yes. Thank you. February 20th through the 23rd. Um, and then we're also um, in San Francisco at Feinstein's there over Mother's Day weekend. And um, we are at the Kennedy Center. I'm not sure when. And uh, and then one other, <laughs> then a few more concerts that I can't remember. You're gonna be a test. So yeah, right. And then I um, so I, I sold this TV idea to Sony. Oh my god. Um, yeah. So what I'm, is it? I can't really, I'm not allowed okay. to talk about it. Tell but so, later. yeah, I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah. But I'm trying to find right now, like, a showrunner for that show. I'll do it. Uh, okay, great, I'm, perfect. I'm Done. <laughs> um, so that, and then, yeah, 
that's basically it. Being a mom and trying to work on that show and doing the shows with my mom. And... So, okay, a couple of questions. So, do you do the concert circuit? That, you I do. do that. Do you enjoy that? It's my favorite thing that I do. Yeah. Because it's singing, which I love, and then it's telling jokes and just talking to people, which I love. Does it pay a lot? No. Okay. Just yeah. wondering. Yeah. Nothing in the live arts pays a lot. <laughs> yeah. What do you, and so you're writing TV shows now? Well, no. I, I, I came up with the story and the idea, uh -huh. and I pitched it to them, and I, and I am um, self-aware enough to realize I don't have enough writing experience. Uh -huh. I've written like little, teen, you know, little small videos, like that feminist video I did with Connie Britton. And oh my Thank God, you. yes, yes, yes. Um, and like some other stuff like that with my collaborator, Ashley Van Buren, but... Um, you know, I'm looking for, I need like a seasoned showrunner who's done television shows to really do this. What does it mean to like have sold it to them? Is, is it like a development deal? Yeah, well, no, like they bought the pitch. So meaning like Sony is the studio and yeah. now we have to go out to networks to, to pitch it to networks. But before we do that, I need to get somebody who's gonna like really run it. Cause also I couldn't be the kind of mom I wanna be if yeah. I was starring in it and writing it and show running it. So I want somebody else to be in control of it so that I can just be in it and be in it. What about theater? Like, what do you want? What do you I want, want to do comedies. I want to do yeah. more plays. I really enjoy doing um, musicals, obviously, more than anything in the world. But a long-running musical is really, really hard. It's challenging. And I, I have an autoimmune disease, which is, oh. like, sucks. Yeah. And uh, so it's eight shows a week in a musical for a year really is hard for me. So you like these, like, sort of shorter runs? Well, I can do a play for a long time, because if you lose your voice, it's okay, yeah, you know? Yeah. But I just feel guilty going to a musical and being like, ah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> you know, somebody paid a lot of money for that ticket, and I'd rather them see my, like, very capable, wonderful understudy yeah. than me, like, barfing and being terrible, you know? <laughs> to, like, try to be a hero about it. So, and, you know, it's like the stage door thing is really hard for me, because... You know, if, if you're taking a lot of photos of people and signing autographs and shaking hands, I just, it makes me sick so easily. Yeah. And now that I have Ella, it's like, if I get sick, she gets sick, and it's yeah. like a whole Russian doll situation of illness. So, um, for me, like, a short musical or, like, encores or something where yeah. I get to, like, do something really incredible, but it's not incumbent upon me to be, like, completely healthy for a year. Yeah. Because um, I can't live in a bubble with my kid. Oh, you yeah. Know? No, I yeah. really can't. And so, um, in terms of theater, like, t to do plays, a straight play that's funny, is, like, yeah. where it's at. I was thinking, when you said the stage door, that we are at BroadwayCon. Hi, BroadwayCon. <laughs> you know, it's all, this is, like, this is the stage door. Welcome to the stage door. What do you feel? I, I feel like stage door culture has evolved so much to the point of, like, it's so amazing that, that, that you know, Theater goers have the opportunity to like yeah. stay and meet Laura freaking banana. <laughs> so how do you do? You enjoy that aspect of it? Like, is it more work for you? I can't really do it. Yeah. You know, I did it. I did it for a long time, and I was just constantly sick. Yeah. And you know, not because like people are, you know, gross, <laughs> but because I have an autoimmune disease and yeah. I have to be really careful. So. Um, it makes me sad because I've had some of my happiest moments at stage doors. You get to hear people's stories, you know, you get to hear that like, you know, you might be having a bad day or you had a bad show and someone can tell you that something you did was meaningful to them. Yeah. And it's just incredible. It makes me feel like, oh, what I do for a living isn't silly, you yeah. know, because sometimes it feels silly. Um, and then when you meet someone who is like, I was going through a really hard time, and then when I saw She Loves Me, I smiled for the first time in months. Like, that makes me feel really grateful yeah. that that's what we get to do for them. So I, I feel sad that I can't do stage chores, but I also sometimes feel a little frustrated that there's this sense of entitlement there, where I'm like, you didn't pay a ticket to to have a stage door experience. Uh -huh, you paid a ticket uh -huh. to see me in the show, and the people tomorrow paid a ticket to see me in the show. So if I'm sick, then... I gotta go home. I got, yeah, it's, or like, if I'm sick for them, it's not fair. So yeah. um, so there, people have tweeted some pretty nasty stuff at me. Really? Like, oh my God, yeah. But like, I don't care about people, and where I'm like, how, how why would you say that? Yeah. You know, I, just because I didn't come out. I, mean, I try to send out playbills and pre signed so if people want them, they can have them. It's not that I don't want to do it, it's that I have to care for myself. Yeah. And, you know, self care is an important thing. Yeah. The clock is ticking down. I wanted to ask you, like, what is your, that you want to share? Like, what is your favorite memory or your favorite experience so far being a mom? 
favorite experience being a mom? I have so many. But when Ella really started giving kisses, uh. it was like kind of changed my life. And the other day I was having a really hard day. I was like really sad about the show closing and feeling like, some, you know, it's funny. Sometimes I feel like I'm not as successful as I'd like to be. Or I'm not as successful as successful as some other people and I should work harder or I what am I doing wrong? And I get into like a really negative space. And Ella and I were on the train and I had her in one of those carriers and she was underneath my coat to keep her warm. And I guess I was sort of looking off into the distance, feeling sorry for myself. And Ella grabbed me by my face and she ran her fingers through my hair and she went. Oh and she kissed me God. so sweetly, like, Mama, I love you. Uh, and it was the most incredible experience I probably have ever had in my life. Other than them putting her on my chest after I have 56 hours of pushing her up. <laughs> was it 56 hours? Oh yeah. God. Are you awake the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> yes. like that's how labor works. No, it was, yeah. It was 56 it was three, hours? Yeah, so she, I went into labor on a Sunday and she was born on a Tuesday. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> that's the kind of response I'm looking for. I don't want to be too personal, but like, did you do a traditional hospital environment? Well, I was for 40 hours at home. And then finally, I was like, give me the drugs. <laughs> yeah. so I went to the hospital and they gave me the drugs. And then I pushed for two and a half hours. And they were like, in 30 minutes, you're going to have a C-section. And I was like, no, I'm not. This is and perfect. I, I'm not doing it. <laughs> that's not true. That's not, that's not true at all. Um, so I, yeah, that was in, in, intense. But that moment was incredible. And it made me realize, like, man, we are just all on this planet for such a short time. And she's growing so quickly. And uh, it, it just her empathy in that moment was such a beautiful thing to witness. Yeah. Where I was like, you are 11 months old and you can tell that I'm sad and you want me to feel better. Oh my God. And that made me feel like, well, we have to be doing something right in terms of parenting her. <laughs> or she just came out that way. <laughs> <laughs> I love you so much. I love you so much. Can we do, like for the last minute, can we do like a backward selfie on yeah. the camera? You guys, this is Laura Benanti. Thank you guys so much. Yeah.